Hello, this is a demonstration of a full spinal immobilization. This is a skill that you use when the mechanism of injury is so great that you think that there's a bad spinal trauma and you want to make sure that it does not get exacerbated on the way to the hospital. So as usual, we start with a, a putting on the VSI and considering C-spine. In this case, we know that there was some mechanism of injury, so Ashani will immediately take C-spine and we will do our primary assessment and follow that with a rapid trauma assessment. Um, after, during the rapid trauma assessment, after we assess the head and the back of the neck, we'll apply the C-collar. And Ishani has already made a video about proper measuring of a C-collar, so you can find that in the description. And we already measured this one a minute ago, so I'm going to go ahead and apply it to our patient. Ishani's going to move her um, C-spine immobilization onto the C-collar now. And at the end of our rapid trauma assessment, we'll perform PMS. For a spinal, full spinal immobilization, um, you will ask the patient to, you'll first assess pulses. Um, if they are conscious or unconscious, you will attempt to do the motor and sensory. And you can document if they're unconscious that you tried it, but you cannot assess motor and sensory. Um, this patient is conscious. I'm going to ask her to squeeze my fingers bilaterally. I'm going to see, like, note if they're different, different strengths on either side. And then I'm going to individually on each side ask if she can tell which finger I'm touching. So, okay, and on your left hand. Ring finger, ring finger. Cool. And then the process is very similar on the feet. I'll feel for pulses. I'll feel for like a pedal or a distal pulse in general. And then I will ask the patient to push up or to pull up and then to push down. Again, we're noting if there's any uh, kind of discrepancy between the sides. And then we would remove her shoes and I would ask her to identify which toe I'm touching one at a time. So on this toe, okay, and over here. Yep, okay. So after we've done PMS, we are going to complete our rapid trauma assessment with um, feeling down the back during our log roll. To properly log roll, you will put the patient's arm that's closest to you straight up and down to form like this line across their body on which they will be resting as they're rolled. And then you put their other arm across their body like this. You'll have a partner help you in a log roll, and it's a very slow and controlled process with the person at the head taking control so that we make sure that there's no exacerbation to the spine. I will, me and my partner will cross arms as we um, take hold of the patient, and I will grab here for support under their arm. On Ishani's count, we will lay the patient onto the spine board in a scooping motion. All right, on three, one, two, Three. Okay. Note that at this time the patient is fairly close to the center of the spine board, but there's still a little bit of movement um, away from the people who are log rolling. So we're going to need to move the patient in a Z formation, mostly up and down, to make sure the spine is staying in line um, to get them into the center. So at this time, I will grab um, kind of under the patient's arms, around the um, ribs. And Andy will grab her on the hips, and Ishani again is leading the movement as the person holding the head. So we will start by moving mostly down and a little bit toward the center. All right, ready? One, two, three. All right, moving up. One, two, three. Perfect. Notice how we also are making sure that the board is staying still because you don't want to slide the patient and the spine board at the same time. Now that the patient has been centered on the board, it's time to secure the patient to the board. So we made note that the patient's shoulders are right below where the shoulder strap is because the strap will go right into the groove of the shoulder. Our first straps, I'm going to move our patient's arms back down so that we don't strap their arm in and so that we can um, strap their body securely to the board without having their arm preventing us from getting a tight fit. Remember that when we're strapping the patient to the board, we're going to do the feed and pull method. So with this hand, I'm feeding this line toward the buckle. And with this hand, I am tightening and pulling in the opposite direction. We want the straps to be as tight as um, is safe for the patient. And to measure this, I'll put two fingers under the strap and see if I can turn them this way. And if my fingers, when I turn my hand, instead kind of like layer on top of each other, that's when I know that it's tight enough. Because
because it's I can't get two fingers of it. These straps are right over the patient's shoulders, and I'm again feeding and tucking. With these neck straps, I'm going over the patient's hips and not the patient's stomach because that is a more secure fit. We're using the same technique to tighten the straps. And note that we were strapping from the top of the body toward the feet. Okay. Our final step in securing the patient is going to be adding the head rolls so that we can make sure that the neck is completely secure to the board. So at this time, we're gonna coordinate with the partner at the head in order to slide the head rolls under. So she will lift the patient's head just the slightest bit in order to fit the head rolls underneath. And at this point, she is going to move from holding the seat collar to moving the rolls. I will now secure the patient's head to the stretcher with tape. In the field, we do not fold the tape. We do, our tape reaches from the side of the board over here, underneath the board. You might have to wrap it around a couple times. If the environment is wet or something, just make sure this tape is as secure as it can be. And the tape will come over. I really don't want to rip her eyebrows off right now, but do not fold the tape in the field. You will tape over the forehead and to the other side of the board. Make sure you tear off a big piece of tape because you don't want to end up with too little tape. Oop, and don't let that happen. Make sure you tape very securely and then you repeat this procedure. Starting from the same point, you may even want to cross like an X here and going over the patient's shin on top of the C collar. Again, don't rip your tape too small or else you'll have to start over. I'm wrapping around the back of the board and I crossed over this tape that's going over the forehead. And now at this point, our patient, or I'm sorry, my partner can finally um, remove inline state manual stabilization. And I will complete by checking PMS on all extremities. So it'll be the same process. I'll feel for pulses. I'll ask the patient to squeeze bilaterally and then I will ask on each side, can you feel which, yep, ring finger, and perfect. And again, I will feel for heel pulses. I will ask the patient to push down with both feet, pull up with both feet, and one at a time to identify which toe I'm touching. Toe. Toe. Okay. We will now demonstrate a two-person lift on a spinally immobilized patient. Remember to lift with your legs and butt and never with your back. I'll have you count it, Sandy. All right, up on three. One, two, three. Up. Yay. And down. And down on three. One, two, three, down. And then four people. And here we go with a four-person lift. It's very similar. Same process. Make sure to use the big muscles in your body and not your back. And we will place ourselves on the four corners of the board. And if Ashani, you can count us off. All right, so on three. One, two, three. Yay! Three, one, two, three. Lift with your legs. 